During the past hundred years, the ivory-billed woodpecker has repeatedly been feared extinct only to be rediscovered. The most recent rediscovery in Arkansas was announced in a paper that was featured on the cover of Science in 2005. It was the first report of this species by ornithologists in several decades. The following year, another group of ornithologists reported a series of sightings in Florida. The persistence of the ivory-billed woodpecker became controversial when nobody managed to obtain the clear photo that is regarded as the standard form of evidence for documenting birds. I'm going to talk about some of the reasons why the ivory-billed woodpecker would be a good candidate for the most elusive bird in the world. The ivory-billed woodpecker has a history of elusiveness that is unique among the birds of North America and perhaps of the world. It has persisted in barely detectable numbers since about 1920. It has repeatedly been feared extinct only to be rediscovered. Other species have been rediscovered, but the ivory-billed woodpecker is a species of great interest in a region that is easily accessible to a large number of bird watchers. It isn't necessarily an indication of elusiveness when a species is rediscovered in a remote part of the world. In this case, however, there have been multiple rediscoveries in a heavily populated area. Nobody has ever obtained a clear photo of an ivory-billed woodpecker without knowing the location of an active nest. When the location of a nest was known, Clear photos such as this one were obtained at the nest, but only poor quality photos such as this one were obtained away from the nest. During the past several decades, there have been many reports of sightings, but nobody has found a nest or obtained a clear photo. Ornithologists failed to obtain a clear photo during multi-year searches at sites in Arkansas and Florida where there were dozens of sightings and they were convinced these birds were present. Prior to the searches in those states, the ivory-billed woodpecker had not been reported by ornithologists in several decades. After discovering a remnant population of ivory-billed woodpeckers in Cuba in 1948, John Dennis continued searching for these birds and had sightings in Florida in the 1950s and in Texas in the 1960s. The Cuban subspecies resides in a different type of habitat than the swamp forest habitats of the southeastern United States. Looking back in 1985, Dennis made the following comments. It takes a couple of years to search out and find the ivory bill in only a single swamp. It is next to impossible to obtain photographs of an ivory bill in a southern swamp unless a nesting site is discovered. It is known from historical facts that the ivory-billed woodpecker is a remarkably elusive bird. The reasons for this history can be understood in terms of the following factors that are related to habitat and behavior. Ivory-billed woodpeckers reside in southern swamp forests that cover tens of square miles. This image shows just a fraction of the Pearl River Swamp in Louisiana. It is a formidable task to search for a bird in such a vast forest. Due to a lack of visibility, it is difficult to find and photograph birds in forests. These images show what it is like on the ground in the Pearl River Swamp. It is difficult to move along a search path in a southern swamp forest. This footage was obtained while hiking through a flooded area. With each step, it is necessary to pull your feet out of the thick mud. Going through miles of this type of habitat is very hard on the knees. A fall in the winter can result in hypothermia. This footage was obtained while hiking through thick vegetation. 
in this type of habitat, it is impossible to get close to a wary bird without being detected. And venomous snakes may be lurking underfoot. It can take several hours to hike just a few miles through this type of habitat. The chief editor of a leading ornithology journal made this comment in refusing to consider for publication the strongest evidence for the persistence of the ivory-billed woodpecker that has been obtained during the past several decades. One of the reasons that people get great photos of extremely rare birds all the time is that many habitats receive heavy coverage by bird watchers. However, bird watchers rarely visit the interiors of southern swamp forests. As Jeff Hill noted in his book on the ivory-billed woodpecker, the interior of a southern swamp forest has a relatively low species diversity to attract bird watchers. There are many deterrents to discourage bird watchers from visiting such habitats. Southern swamp forests are heavily hunted and this factor alone is sufficient to deter many bird watchers. During eight years of field work in the Pearl River Swamp, I occasionally saw bird watchers along a paved road that provides access to a tiny fraction of the habitat. I never saw bird watchers anywhere near the remote areas miles from the road where I observed ivory-billed woodpeckers. When venturing deep into such habitats, there is a danger of hypothermia in the cold and damp winters and heat stroke in the hot and humid summers. Other dangers in this type of habitat include wild boars, alligators, and venomous snakes. I had many experiences with these dangers during eight years of field work in the Pearl River Swamp. Habitat alone is not sufficient to account for the elusiveness of the ivory-billed woodpecker. For example, I had a sighting of a white-tailed kite during my work in the Pearl River Swamp. At the time, that species might have been a greater rarity in the area than the ivory-billed woodpecker. But there were other reports of that species, possibly the same bird, during the same period. Several factors related to behavior contribute to the elusiveness of the ivory-billed woodpecker. A lack of conspicuous behaviors can have a profound effect on the elusiveness of a bird. The blue jay is one of the more conspicuous birds of North America. Bachman's sparrow is known for its lack of conspicuous behaviors during the winter. If these species were present in an acre of flat woods pine habitat in Florida, an experienced bird watcher would probably detect the jay almost immediately, but might fail to notice the sparrow during several visits to the habitat. On the basis of their observations in the Singer Tract, Allen and Kellogg provided these accounts indicating that the ivory-billed woodpecker lacks conspicuous behaviors. We had hunted for three days for this particular pair of birds without ever hearing them, even though we were frequently within 300 yards of the nest, which we finally found because we happened to be within hearing distance when the birds changed places on the nest. They are not noisy except when disturbed. Their voice does not carry, carry nearly as far as that of the pileated woodpecker. In the big trees which they normally frequent, they are easily overlooked. We camped for five days within 300 feet of one nest, and except when the birds were about to change places on the nest or were disturbed, seldom heard them. We were never able to follow a bird continuously through the forest in either Louisiana or Florida for more than an hour before it would make a long flight and we would be unable to find it again. According to historical accounts, the ivory-billed woodpecker is an exceptionally wary species. Arthur T. Wayne encountered more than 200 ivory-billed woodpeckers while collecting specimens in the 1890s. 
He left an account of ivory bill woodpeckers that were too wild to be approached nearer than 300 or 400 yards. The ivory billed woodpecker is a nomadic and non territorial species. It is known from historical accounts that ivory billed woodpeckers make long flights to forage. For this reason, most sightings occur far from the nest. By the 1930s, ornithologists were aware that this non territorial behavior accounts for sporadic sightings of ivory billed woodpeckers that could not be relocated as indicated by this comment by Bent. When a non-territorial and wary bird is flushed at a location far from a nest, an opportunity to obtain a photo might last for only a few seconds. If the camera is not ready or the view is not favorable at that moment, it might take years of searching before another opportunity arises. Ivory-billed woodpeckers are believed to make long-term moves as the abundance of food varies with ecological cycles. Due to this nomadic behavior, ivory-billed woodpeckers could be absent from sites that seem favorable, but present at sites that have been overlooked. Let's consider some of the challenges of finding an ivory-billed woodpecker in a habitat such as the one shown here. The first issue that might come to mind is the nomadic nature of this species. Without having any way of knowing if the species is present, it would be difficult to make the decision to commit to the type of long-term search that is required in order to have a reasonable chance of finding these birds. While following a search path in such habitats, it may be difficult to pass through areas that are flooded or have thick vegetation. Keeping an eye out for venomous snakes and other dangers may be a distraction that makes it easier for an ivory-billed woodpecker to avoid detection. Since the ivory-billed woodpecker lacks conspicuous behaviors, it is difficult to detect these birds from a distance, but they are exceptionally wary and will move away from the search path if they detect you before you detect them. When flushed, an ivory-billed woodpecker will rapidly vanish into cover that exists nearly everywhere in a southern swamp forest. An ivory-billed woodpecker that is encountered far from its nest might never return to the same area, and it might be years before the next encounter. In a series of papers that may be accessed at my website, factors related to habitat and behavior were used in an analysis that suggests that on the average, it takes millions of times longer to obtain a clear photo of an ivory-billed woodpecker than it would take to obtain a clear photo of a hypothetical baseline species that has a more typical habitat and more typical behaviors. This analysis is consistent with the remarkable history of elusiveness. These papers also discuss video footage that was obtained during three encounters with ivory-billed woodpeckers that contains the strongest evidence for the persistence of this species that has been obtained during the past several decades. Does it seem hard to believe that one person managed to obtain stronger evidence than teams of ornithologists managed to obtain during the searches in Arkansas and Florida? The success of my search was due to a favorable set of circumstances along with a large dose of good luck. One of the factors that favored the success of my search is that my employer has an office on the banks of the Pearl River Swamp where there had been recent reports of sightings. In this photo, the Stennis Space Center appears in the distance. The light-colored trees that cross the photo from left to right correspond to English Bayou, where I had nine sightings and obtained two of the videos in 2006 and 2008. Determination is essential when searching for the ivory-billed woodpecker. While getting an education at MIT, I would often work around the clock to solve the most challenging problems. On several occasions, I was the only one in the class to solve a problem. On a few occasions, even the professor wasn't able to solve the problem. 
One of my professors pointed out that I was the most determined student he had ever known. Some students might have taken offense to this comment, but Toomere intended it as a compliment, and he was right. Determination has been the key to my success during a career in science and during a search for the ivory-billed woodpecker. The difference in the appearance of these hats is an indication of my determination. The hat on the left is the one that I wore during eight years of field work in the Pearl River Swamp. It looked just like the hat on the right when I began the search. I kept searching for five years after having my last sighting in 2008. This x-ray is another indication of my determination. I broke my left arm in a fall in February 2007. The first anniversary of a flurry of sightings was coming up. I had to return to the area to see if the birds might return. I managed to kayak several miles to that area and back with a freshly broken arm. My thinking was that if a football player can go back into a game with an injury, I should do something similar for a much more worthy cause than a football game. I paid a hefty price for that decision. The force of paddling the kayak caused the ends of the bone to slip out of place and I had to have surgery to install the plate and screws that appear in the x-ray. Another factor that favored the success of my search is my experience at coming up with ideas as a scientist. I got one of the ideas after having a series of sightings of ivory-billed woodpeckers that flushed at close range and then vanished into cover before I could put down the kayak paddles and grab a camera. I got the idea to mount a high-def video camera on kayak paddles and keep it running at all times. With this setup, it is possible to get the camera on a bird almost instantly. Another idea was to use some of the tallest trees in the swamp as observation platforms. It is known from historical accounts that the ivory-billed woodpecker flies long distances over the treetops to foraging sites. I was hoping to spot one far in the distance from trees that provide vantage points like this. The approach ended up working, but not in the way I was expecting. During one of the observation sessions, an ivory-billed woodpecker flew up the bayou and passed nearly directly below. In this footage, I am climbing up to an observation position that is 87 feet above the bayou. Several additional factors favored the success of my search for the ivory-billed woodpecker. During a period of several years leading up to the search, I honed my bird-watching skills during numerous intensive bird-watching trips in various parts of the world. Having grown up near a swamp in Florida, I was probably more comfortable than most people would be when venturing alone deep into the swamp. As a scientist, I'm an independent thinker, and I therefore wasn't discouraged at all by the naysayers when the persistence of the ivory-billed woodpecker became controversial. During a brief visit to the Pearl River in 2000, I heard a series of Kent calls. So I knew the birds were there, and I was confident that I would find them. I was determined to do whatever it took to find them.